Let's look at key quotations that you need to memorize when it comes to Snowball's character. And of course, do bear in mind that Snowball is the protagonist of this novella, whilst Napoleon is arguably the antagonist. Even if, of course, Snowball does get banished from the farm, he represents all the ideals and he represents the idealistic leader. However, of course, do bear in mind that his fatal flaw was that he was unable to recognize the cunning that Napoleon had. And of course, he wasn't shrewd enough to act before Napoleon did. So he was outwitted by Napoleon. However, he really represents Trotsky contextually. So when uh, the Russian Revolution happened, the two primary people that were under Lenin, so of course, Lenin was the person that led it, he then passed away. Now you had Stalin and Trotsky. Stalin was very forceful, very cunning. However, Trotsky, even if he was the leader of the Red Army and very strategic, he was also very trusting of all his other comrades within the uh, communist group. And hence, he was unable to recognize Stalin's uh, cunning and his shrewd manipulative behavior. And ultimately, Stalin won out in this power struggle and Trotsky was exiled and then later assassinated by men that Stalin sent to Mexico to kill him. Now, of course, when it comes now to Snowball, so that's important contextual information. The first thing to remember is how he is described in contrast to Napoleon. He is described as uh, a more vivacious pig. So in the uh, novella, it states Snowball was a more vivacious pig than Napoleon. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here, which obviously shows just how vibrant and just how easy he was in terms of relating to all the other animals are the adjectives. And of course, this is a comparative adjective, more than. So more vivacious, which obviously it shows him as a direct contrast to Napoleon. And really early on, what this does is it shows the key differences that both Napoleon and Snowball have. And of course, Napoleon is a foil to Snowball. Or actually, you could say vice versa, right? Snowball's character is a foil to Napoleon. Do you remember what foil means? Is when one character is used by the novella, by the writer to show the shortcomings of another character, okay? So Snowball is Napoleon's foil, so he shows the shortcomings that Napoleon doesn't have. He's very relatable, he's very eloquent, he's also very, very intelligent, okay? The second word level analysis you want to do is the maxim the rule that he comes up with and of course he teaches this to the other animals and he realizes that of course whilst the other animals he really wants them to get educated the pigs are the most intelligent and they're very educated however he then realizes that the animals um, such as the horses the chicken uh, the sheep they're not able to uh, remember very complex details so he sums up the uh, principles of animalism in this maxim he writes four legs good comma two legs bad, okay? So this is the maxim that all the animals are told to remember. Humans are bad, right? Two legs, and of course this is referring to Farmer Jones and his men who've now been banished. Whilst any animals which have four legs, and of course animals maybe which also have uh, wings on their back, they are good, they are your allies, okay? This sums up that idea of animalism. Now, the word level analysis you want to do for this is the oxymoron good versus bad. And of course, he really simplifies this for the animals, especially for the animals who are not able to really understand more complex ideas. The third quotation for Snowball's character to bear in mind is when he's talking to Molly. Remember, Molly, is the um, only horse on the farm that really loved being around Farmer Jones because he used to give her sugar, he used to make all these pretty ribbons for her mane and she now misses that. She's unable ultimately to keep up with the hard labor of being on an animal run farm so she ends up running away, okay? And here, this is what uh, Snowball tries to teach her. He says, comrade, said Snowball, those ribbons, ellipsis, are the badge of slavery. Can you not understand that liberty is worth more than the than ribbons okay so she, he's trying to explain to molly that even if she's used to getting sugar all of these really pretty forms of ribbons from the uh, humans these are used as a form of control for her these luxuries are used by the humans to control her but she's unable to recognize this Context you to bear in mind that Molly, so do remember that, of course, uh, the animal farm revolution reflects and mimics the Russian revolution, which happened in 1917 when the Tsar, so Tsar Nicholas, was overthrown. And of course, communism was instituted by uh, Lenin and uh, Stalin, as well as Trotsky. And of course, the Russian guards and the uh, USSR became the USSR's note today. Bear in mind that under the Tsar, there was the middle and upper class known as the bourgeoisie. 
Molly represents contextually this bourgeoisie, the middle and upper class, who their lives under the Tsar was not that difficult. So under Tsar Nicholas, the lives for the vast majority of working class peasants was very, very difficult indeed. However, Molly represents the middle and the upper class whose lives were actually relatively nice and thus these middle and upper class people, once the Russian Revolution happened and their property was confiscated, they fled the country. They wanted the old order back, okay? Now, these luxuries that the middle class bourgeoisie and the upper class bourgeoisie enjoyed are symbolized in the novella through ribbons. And when you're doing word level analysis here, you want to focus on the repetition of ribbons, which are symbols of luxuries, okay, on the animal farm, which Molly misses. The other word level analysis you want to do here is the hyperbole. When, uh, Napole when, when Snowball, Snowball uh, asserts to Molly, these ribbons are the badge of slavery. So of course this is hyperbole. However, this hyperbole does show that this is the tool that Farmer Jones used to control you and to get work and labor out of you and to just placate you, to make you say, no, even if I work really hard, it's okay, I'll get ribbons and I get these little small rewards. The final word level analysis you want to do here is the abstract noun liberty, which for Snowball is far more important than anything else. Liberty is worth the hard work, it's worth giving up these luxuries for. And of course, going back contextually, a lot of the middle class and upper class really enjoyed some of the liberties, or rather some of the rewards and the luxuries that they got from being under the Tsar. However, what Lenin and what Trotsky was trying to show them is actually the freedom that you get under communism is worth more than some of the little luxuries that you got during Tsar Nicholas's rule. A lot of Middle class people didn't agree with that and they ended up fleeing and running away from Russia after the revolution. The other quotation for Snowball's character is Snowball, ellipsis, gave the signal for the charge. He himself charged straight for Jones. And of course, this is a quotation taken from the Battle of Cowshed. This is when Farmer Jones and his men tried to come back and take over the, uh, the farm again and to make it under human control. Of course, Snowball leads the charge. This is in contrast to Napoleon, who mysteriously disappears, okay? And what this shows is in contrast to Napoleon, who's only focused on self-preservation, only on looking after himself. He doesn't really care about the principles of animalism. Snowball is the direct opposite. He really cares about protecting the principles of animalism, and also he's so invested that he's willing to lose his life for it, okay? He's the one that leads the charge. Contextually, you want to remember that Trotsky was similarly very committed to the principles of communism, and also he was known as a real military strategist so he led the Red Army and he personally was very much involved in a lot of the battles that the Red Army fought in order to advance the ideas of communism. Now the word level analysis you want to do here with Snowball's character is firstly sibilance, the Snowball signal and of course the pronouns okay he and himself. What this shows is that Snowball really took charge and was willing to die for the principles of animalism. The final quotation to remember for Snowball's character is, Snowball's plans for the windmill were fully worked out, ellipsis. Snowball used his study as a shed, ellipsis. He was closeted there for hours at a time. So do bear in mind that then once the animal farm was taken over, there developed a power struggle between Snowball, who was really intellectual, who had all of these plans. And part of his plans was to try and make life easier for the animals by creating a windmill, meaning that if the windmill worked perfectly as he had envisioned, the animals would actually work less whilst the windmill worked more, so the animals would actually have a better life. Napoleon, who was threatened by these really good ideas and plans, was completely against the windmill until obviously Snowball was kicked off. And then he said, no, no, no I changed my mind. Actually, I'm for the windmill. Contextually, do bear in mind that the windmill contextually in the USSR, so going back to Russia, it represents Russia's drive towards modernizing its economy. So Russia under the Tsar, so this is uh, the King Nicholas, was a very backward economy. It was very underdeveloped. Under the uh, communist leaders, they were trying to push for economic modernization drives in order to make Russia catch up with the rest of the world economically. Okay, so the windmill is contextually symbolizing this notion that the communists recognize Russia needs to catch up economically. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here, of course, which is emphasizing how Snowball was very focused on advancing the principles of animalism. He really cared about making life better for all the other animals in contrast to Napoleon, who only cared for himself, is firstly, you've got alliteration windmill, so alliteration of W, windmill and worked. And of course, you've got sibilance, Snowball, study and shed. Okay. And what this, of course, shows is that Snowball was a real intellectual. He was very much, not only was he intellectually gifted and he was able to really think far ahead into the future and come up with these very elaborate plans and work very hard for it. 
On the other hand, he wasn't just a thinker, he was also a doer. As the previous quotation shows, he was also willing to fight, okay? So he was in many ways almost the perfect leader. However, what he lacked was the cunning and the shrewdness to see through Napoleon. And of course, then that therefore means Napoleon was able to outwit him, okay? So those are the quotations to remember when it comes to Snowball's character and the word level analysis to do when looking at key quotations for his character.